What's up, guys? Welcome to Upfront Games Week 28. Something like that. I think that's right. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. So, starting with PlayStation uh, again, standard format. We're going to do some trailers. Still no trailer for Stadia this week. Uh, actually, news is pretty slim at this point. Obviously, it's still in beta, so there's that. Um, but anyway, the video for PlayStation this week is going to be touring carts, so we'll go ahead and check that out. And then we'll jump into it. Alright guys, so that was Touring Carts. Looks like a cool little um, kart racing game, obviously. There's a few that we all know and love. Um, this one's been out for quite some time. Um, it's just now making its port over to PlayStation. So, uh, by all means, check that out. It comes out on the 12th, uh, so uh, this Thursday. Um, so go ahead and nab that if you're into karting games. They're actually pretty fun most of the time. So. Anyway, moving on to PlayStation news, let's jump into State of Play. That's Tuesday the 10th. Um, it's going to be at 6 a.m. Pacific Time and 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Let's go ahead and check that out. They're stating that there's 20 minutes of new game reveals, new gameplay footage, release dates, announcements, uh, PlayStation Worldwide Studios updates, and more. There will be no updates on next-gen content within this episode so uh, that's to be expected when PlayStation is planning a big event in February uh, for next-gen uh, news of some sort so obviously we know we're gonna be getting the little tidbits here and there but it's gonna be pretty slim up until that February um, show so Keep that in mind. However, State of Play has been actually pretty good about doing some updates uh, when it comes to PlayStation side of things, and I think that you know this could be worth a watch just to see what's coming and uh, what they've got to say this month. Final episode of 2019 should be interesting. Anyway, uh, lastly for PlayStation, it came from space and ate our brains. Yeah. It's a, uh, it, it hits PS4 early 2020. Um, it's a couch co-op shooter with hungry extraterrestrials and top-down colorful combat. You can go check out the trailer, but I'm sure as we get closer to its release date, early 2020, we will have the trailer right here at Upfront Games. So go ahead and check that out as we get closer, or go over to YouTube, type it in, and you know, check it out now if you don't like us that much. Um, anyway, moving on now into Xbox. Xbox's uh, trailer for the week is Jurassic World Evolution Return to Jurassic Park. Now before I play this, obviously I know these are some of these are cross-platform. So when you see a trailer and it's still got a PlayStation logo, an Xbox logo, whatever, um, that's because it was the best trailer uh, for the game itself. So uh, go ahead and check it out. Alright guys, that was Jurassic World Evolution, Return to Jurassic Park. This is uh, 
Bama out, I believe, on PlayStation for a minute. Um, coming to Xbox. Oh, actually, sorry. I take that back. It's coming out for PlayStation as well as Xbox on the same day, Tuesday. Um, however, PlayStation logo got it. Kind of disclaimed that in the beginning. Cool. Anyway. Uh, Halo Reach is available now with the Halo Master Chief Collection. It's available as a $9.99 add-on for those who already own it on the console. Uh, it is a full package for PC at $39.99 uh, that will include everything the Master Chief Collection has in it as well as Halo Reach. So, um, that being said, if you're into the Halo series, by all means go check that out. Um, could be worth a buy um, if it's something that you're into. It is a, a decent game, so I would say I'm not overly partial to it. That's just me, opinion. Okay. All right. Um, upcoming additions to Game Pass on console include uh, my friend Pedro, Naruto to Baruto, Demons Till and Wanderings, or Wander Song, sorry. Those are all out now. Um, what's coming this week is eFootball PES 2020, Overcooked 2, Pathologic 2, and then Division. Those all come out this week on Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, by all means, check those out if you're interested. All right, that is pretty much it for Xbox. Now, um, moving into Nintendo this week, we've got Black Sad under the skin. So go ahead and check this out. Many private investigators will tell you, the job consists mainly of dealing with two-timing husbands and wives. But once in a while, you're lucky enough to land the kind of case that can get you killed. Suicide, a bereaved daughter and a missing man. I just hope you prove your professional worth before the day is over. My job? Find Bobby Yale, a rising star from Joe Dunn's boxing gym. If you find Yale and he fights, I'll be able to pay you whatever you ask for. I confess, the idea of a good old missing person investigation raised my spirits. But my excitement was about to be put out like a cigarette, and my morale put to the test. You're a good man, Blackside. A simple exchange of information. If I wish to complete my job, shortcuts existed in the crime world. But did I really want to go down the path that put men behind bars? I'm gonna kill you! Now I'm still here. All right, guys, that was Black Side Under the Skin. We've done some coverage on this in the past, I believe, for PlayStation and Xbox. Um, it is releasing on Nintendo Switch on the 10th, which is Tuesday. So go ahead and check that out. Um, now, moving into Nintendo news, 64 Mate is a new add-on for N64. It's not a joke legit um it connects to the base of the n64 console it can house video upscalers capture devices and games essentially if you owned a 64 back in the day which i did um i don't own one anymore but i did um there was little uh, places underneath that you could see where it might connect to some things and back then you probably didn't really use it however um they Basically a company that obviously has some diehard uh, N64 fans, people that might still have this console, uh, developed something with a 3D printer that houses games and other pieces up underneath the N64 itself. It actually does look pretty cool. I mean, you could probably put 10 to 12 games under there, maybe. Um, but am I going to use it? Probably not. But if you still have an N64 and you're looking for a better way to store your games, etc., then by all means, check this out. 
Um, it's going to be put up, I believe, on Kickstarter in the next uh, couple weeks to a month, is what they were stating. They've already kind of printed several, and it will be available for mass production. Um, but it's called 64 Mate. So if you want to take a look at that and you own one, by all means, go check them out. All right, Yacht Club delays Shovel Knight update for 3DS and Wii U ahead of the next week's release. Um, it looks like they're they're the only platforms that are being affected uh, by the update being pushed back. Uh, as all others are on schedule to include Nintendo Switch. So um, if you guys own Shovel Knight, the update, uh, I believe it's Alpha 4.0, uh, or you may be updating from that. However, um, that update, if you own a 3DS or a Wii U, is going to be delayed. So uh, keep that in mind going forward. And that's it for Nintendo. Let's go ahead and jump into Stadia. Again, there is no trailer for Stadia this week. They did release um, a new game on Stadia, but um, it's a game that's been out for other consoles or has been out on Steam. Um, so it's not it's not really a new game to Stadia. And like I said, until Stadia is like starting to do reveals and releases on a regular basis uh then i'll i'll throw up trailers in here for uh stadia titles now um let's just jump into their news so price points were set originally on stadia to be competitive for stadia games from every publisher out there um for the most part that was correct but games like darksiders genesis which is the game that just released this week uh it's dropping for $40 on Stadia compared to $30 on other platforms. So that raised some eyebrows within the community because of the fact that what reason do you have, right? Well, the ease of play is what Stadia is touting for the price increase. Now, keep in mind, Stadia is still in beta. It's in its infancy here. And when it comes down to it, it is really easy to take it and use it elsewhere. However, will that hold up um, as they go forward? Who knows? I, for one, will not be purchasing Darksiders Genesis on Stadia because, one, I don't need it, and I also don't need to pay an extra $10 for it. So um, that's just how I am looking at this release. However, it does make sense that it would raise some eyebrows Again, Stadia has a solid plateau, foot, ground to stand on, if you will, um, when it comes to ease of play here as being the reason for this one, one title. There are other titles that have dropped on Stadia at a higher price point than the likes of Steam or others, but when you look at Steam, they've got hundreds of thousands of games on these, this platform. So... I got the ability to um, kind of cut down price a little bit on certain titles and you know more power to them uh, Steam is a great platform but Stadia again it's in its infancy 10 bucks to play it anywhere I'm not sweating it and if you are then hey just don't buy it <laughs> anyway um, all right moving on one last piece of news for Stadia this week and I'm amazed that I got two because again, we're early in this, but cross saving of certain titles has given a great test of Stadia's abilities. What I mean by that is there was an article that was placed out with somebody touting Stadia um, this week in reference to grinding. Um, what he stated was he was going on a lot of vacations for holidays and whatnot, and Stadia actually allowed him to do some things that he wouldn't have otherwise been able to do without packing up his entire console, taking it with him. Um, so Destiny 2 obviously was one of the first releases on Stadia, but it offered cross-save. So he was able to take his, state, his Destiny 2 um, save on one device, import it to Stadia, and then he went on his Thanksgiving vacation. Use several different uh, 
points to log in and utilize the game. So overall, it worked great. Um, there were points like LAX, I think, was where he's flying out of. Um, he ran into issues there too due to network speeds. But when he got to his parents' house and they have some ancient internet there, um, he was able to get through just fine with a good connection. And then hotels overall was able to um, grind at his goal for the uh, for the time being. So obviously not any multiplayer matches or anything like that on the trip, but he was able to get closer to his goal of obtaining a certain rank within uh, Destiny 2. So some good news overall. Now, uh, as always, questions, comments below, and by all means, subscribe, like, share, please. Uh, really helps the channel, and I'd like to continue doing this um, for everybody out there and get to a point again where we're able to start doing some giveaways. Uh, we're trying to build the subscribers, but as you know, that's a long process, and we understand that as well. So we're going to just keep going forward. Uh, again, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks.